What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to create a custom snow brush and create a winter wonderland here in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's happening guys? My name is Brendan from BeWheelCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks, and tips. If you're not into learning new things or cool websites, then just find me on Instagram at Burnwells to see a little bit more of my work. So today we're going to be talking about how to create an awesome custom snow brush here in Photoshop, and then we'll be applying that onto our image to create a beautiful winter wonderland. I thought this tutorial would be a very fitting tutorial for this time of year as December has just begun. So let's get right into it. Before I get started, I just wanted to remind anyone that if you're wanting to download this exact snow brush that I create in this tutorial, you can download that snow brush over on BeWheelCreative.com. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. So the first thing that you're going to want to make sure of is that your photo already has some snow in it. Now you can make snow in Photoshop, except it just doesn't look quite as good as a real thing. So I would always recommend to make sure to actually shoot in winter with snow on the ground before you go and apply this brush to your image. So with that being said, let's just hop right into making the brush. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have to create a new document to create our custom brush on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press command or control N to open up a new document and I'm going to set my new document to 500 by 500 pixels with a 150 resolution. Our color mode set to RGB color and our background contents set to white. And then I'll just click create. So now you'll just have this little square here. And what we want to do is we'll grab our marquee tool and then change to the our elliptical marquee tool. So we're going to go to the top corner here. We're going to make not quite a perfect circle, but we're just going to make a slightly off small circle just like this. And we're going to fill it with black by pressing Alt and Delete, making sure that black is set to our foreground color here. Now that we have our little circle added in, in the top corner, I'm going to press Command D to deselect that. And now I'm going to go down and do the same thing in the bottom corner. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to create a little bit of a larger circle down in the bottom corner. And again, I don't want it to be a perfect circle. I want it to be a little bit off. And I'm just going to do something like this. All right. So again, I'm going to press Alt and Delete to fill that selection with black. Now I'm going to press Command D to deselect, and now you'll have these two little circles on either corner of your project here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to Edit, then down here to, to Define Brush Preset. So now you want to make sure that you have your two white circles separated and they're both white, and we're just going to name this to Snow Brush. And we're just going to click Enter. So now it doesn't seem like anything happened, but when we go back to our Husky image here, if we go and grab our brush tool by pressing B, you'll notice that your brush is now the two little dots that you have created here. If you don't see them, just click up here on your brush panel and then go all the way down to the very bottom of your brushes and it will be the last brush there. All right, so now as you see, if I just paint around, it just creates these two lines continuously like this. Now I want, how are we gonna make these start to look like snowflakes? So the first thing that we'll wanna do is we'll wanna change our foreground color to white. So I'm just gonna press X to swap my foreground color to white here. Now I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna click this little tool that looks like a bunch of brushes in a cup or something like that. And I'm gonna play around with some of my brush output settings here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the spacing and I'm just gonna space them out to about 25%. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shape dynamics and I'm going to change my size jitter and I'm just going to go and I'm going to bump this up to about 40%. From here, I'm going to change the minimum diameter to about 5%. And then I'm going to change my angle jitter and this is totally up to you, but for me, I'm just going to go put it up nice and high at about 70%. From here, you can play around with your roundness jitter if you'd like. I'm just gonna put mine up to about 20%. Next, I'm gonna go to my scattering and I'm just going to make sure that both axes are checked. And then I'm gonna bring my scattering slider up and just to spread all of my snowflakes out like this. Now, once you've changed your scatter, if you paint onto your image, you'll notice that all of your, your brush kind of looks randomized just like this. So now we have essentially fix the output setting of our snow brush. So this is what our brush is going to end up looking like here. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this big flakes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale up my brush using my bracket keys and I'm just going to paint a whole bunch of big snowflakes around my image here up in the front. Don't worry about covering up your subject's face or anything like that because we can fix that later on. So this is looking good for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to call this medium flakes. 
With our medium flakes layer selected, I'm just going to decrease the size of my snow brush here, and I'm just going to paint in a couple little strips of snow across my image, just like this. Now I'm going to create one more layer, and I'm going to call this small flakes. And I'm once again going to just scale down my brush using my bracket keys and just paint some smaller flakes throughout my photo, just like this. There's no right or wrong when you're doing this. It's snow, so it's just randomly falling throughout the sky. You can apply as much or as little as you would like. So now, going back to my big flakes, I'm going to turn off my small flakes and my medium flakes, so now I only have my big flakes visible like this. Now I'm going to go up here to Filter, and then down here to Convert for Smart Filters. So we're going to be applying a Gaussian Blur and a Motion Blur to each of our layers. So to make sure that we can always go back and change any of those blurs later on, that's why I'm converting to a smart filter. So once your smart filter is set, you will know that it's set by down here on the bottom corner of your thumbnail. So first thing, I'm gonna add my Gaussian Blur. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, down here to Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. So from here, you it's up to you how much of a blur you want to add, but of course, the higher the radius, the more of a blur your snowflakes are going to have. So in this case, the bigger ones are a little bit closer to the camera, so I'm just gonna make the blur a little bit more heavy on them, like something like this, around 45 pixels. Now I'm just gonna click OK. Now that we've applied our Gaussian Blur, I'm just gonna go up and apply a Motion Blur by going to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Then from here, I'm gonna make sure my angle is set to about 60, and then my distance, is just setting the amount of the blur we're adding. So I'm just gonna add about a 154 pixel motion blur here. And since there's a pretty heavy Gaussian blur on these already, it's not gonna be super noticeable. But anyways, I'm just gonna click OK. Next, I'm gonna go to my medium flakes. I'm gonna turn on my medium flakes layer, turn off my big flakes layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go and convert for smart filters. And then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to make the blur a little bit less since these are a little getting a little further away from my camera. I want these to be a little bit less blurred. So something like this, perhaps. So about 10 pixels, and I'm going to click OK. Next, I'm going to go up to my filter and add a motion blur once again. So filter, blur, and motion blur. I'm going to add the same angle of a blur, but a lot less distance here. Just something along these lines like this. About 38 pixels is working for me. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing one more time on my small flakes. So I'm going to turn on my small flakes, turn off my medium flakes, click on my small flakes layer, and go up to filter, convert for smart filter, so then we can always go back and adjust any of these blurs and whatnot later on. And now I'm just going to go and add my Gaussian blur, so filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And since these ones are the tiny ones, they're not going to have as much of a blur, so I'm going to keep the radius relatively low. Something along this these lines here. Click OK, and now I'm gonna add a motion blur. So filter, blur, and motion blur. So since these ones are a little bit smaller, they're not gonna have as much of a motion blur. So again, I'm just gonna back off just a little bit here. And something like this looks good to me. About 14 pixels, and I'm gonna click OK. So now I'll just turn on all of my layers, and as you see, we have now created sort of this snowy atmosphere within our image. So if you're ever wanting to go back and change some of the blurriness of any of your individual layers here, we can go and we can just do that by double clicking on any of our filters here. So for example, if I want to get rid of some of the Gaussian blur on my big snowflakes, I can just go down here to my big flakes layer, double click on Gaussian blur, and as you see the Gaussian blur panel comes back up and now I can reduce the blur to something that I'm wanting. So this is just an example, but as you can see, that way you can always go back and change something if you need. So now since all of these snowflakes were added in by us, we can also remove any of them that we're wanting. So in the event that there's some covering up our subject's face a little bit too much or whatever, we can just go ahead and we can mask some of those out. So for example here, there are some of our snowflakes that are covering up a bit of our dog's face here. So we just want to pinpoint what layer those snowflakes are sitting on. So we'll just do that by turning on and off a couple of the layers. And as you see, by turning them on and off there, we can see that these flakes here are from our small flakes layer. So that means they're gonna add a layer mask to that small flakes layer. I'm gonna now go up to the top of my window here and I'm just gonna pick a soft brush just like this. And I'm gonna rescale my brush and just mask out some of these snowflakes here. So then I just have a little bit less snowflakes covering this dog's face and stuff like that. Next, I'm gonna 
I want to try to get rid of this snowflake here. So I'm going to pinpoint where that snowflake is sitting. And it looks like it's sitting within our big snowflake. So I'm just going to go to big snowflakes, add a layer mask to my big snowflakes. And I'm just going to, once again, mask out the area around his eye. And then one more time, I'm going to go to medium flakes, add a layer mask, and I'm just going to paint this one off of his tongue, just like that. So now, as you see, we have been able to totally customize where our snowflakes are sitting in our image. And we're also creating a super realistic and awesome looking winter wonderland. So guys, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. That is how you guys create a custom snow brush and a, create a winter wonderland here in Photoshop. So if this tutorial helped you, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing. If you're wanting to see more tutorials just like this one, then make sure to visit my channel or you can visit bewillcreative.com for tons of awesome Photoshop and camera tutorials. Again, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I hope to see you next time for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.